To discuss the effects of climate change on weather and the El Nino pattern that's going to be coming this year, Michael McFadden joins us now from Seattle. He's a senior scientist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Great to have you on the program, Michael. First, remind us what El Nino is, what causes it, and how does it affect weather patterns? Thank you. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, El Nino is underway now in the tropical Pacific. Uh, we have been watching uh, various indicators over the past couple of months. And just a few days ago, uh, NOAA felt competent enough to declare that El Nino is here. Uh, some of the hallmark characteristics are warming of the eastern tropical Pacific, a weakening of the trade winds along the equator, and uh, a shift in the rainfall patterns from the far western Pacific into the central Pacific where the water is warming up. And, uh, these are all pointing in the same direction. We also have a collection of uh, forecast, uh, seasonal forecast models from about 20 institutions around the world that say these incipient El Nino conditions that we see now will continue to amplify through the end of this year and into early next year. So how does it compare to, say, uh, La Nina? If we look at uh, Asia Pacific and Australia, for example, we're coming off the back of several years of flooding. What happens across the North America region, region and, say, Europe? Is it a, a flipping of those weather patterns? Just describe, you know, in layman's terms, what it's going to mean for people and where on a sort of seasonal level. Right. Uh, well, the, um, you can think of the impacts of El Nino and La Nina as roughly opposite. So if El Nino produces or La Nina produces floods in Australia, it will likely produce uh, drought conditions during El Nino and likewise in other parts of the world. So what we're looking at for this year uh, in the very near term is likely a, um, a, a drier Indian subcontinent. The monsoon, summer monsoon rainfalls are weaker during El Nino. All the big drought years in India occur during El Nino events. Uh, later on, we'll see uh, wet conditions in the Pacific Northwest where I live and, and warm winter uh, temperatures southern tier of the United States will likely be wetter because the jet stream is shifted southward during El Nino, and that steers the storms across the southern tier of the United States. So while we might be predicting, you know, some sort of variation in climates with these two systems, when we take into, considerate climate, in, into consideration climate change, how does that impact the El Nino? Are we looking at far more severe conditions? Uh, this is a problem that scientists have been looking at for the past 30 years, and we have made some progress. And I would say that the consensus now is that uh, climate change has had a small impact on El Nino already, and it is likely to have even a greater impact in the future. And what this translates into is a stronger El Nino events and stronger El La Nina events as we move into the uh, latter part of the 21st century. And we're seeing some of that already. Uh, and uh, the question with this event is just how strong it will be, because it's the big ones that cause the most damage. Mm. You've written a textbook on the relationship between climate change and El Nino, and you, you talk a lot about social and economic impacts. What can you tell us about that? Well, uh, for example, too little or too much rain is bad for agriculture, and this is going to affect uh, commodity prices, coffee and uh, soybeans, which are used for cattle, and poultry feed, uh, staples like rice and corn. Uh, it's also bad for uh, power generation if reservoirs are running low because of the drought conditions. And in the Pacific Northwest where I live, there's a competition between water used for agriculture, water used for drinking in municipal areas, uh, water used to preserve salmon runs, and water used for power generation. So these are, uh, these are thorny problems when you know, the resource is limited, uh, like we can expect in some parts of the world during this uh, 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 developing El Nino. All right, Michael McFadden, thanks so much for your time. Senior scientist in National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration.